All right, I'm gonna hop right in. And I'm gonna be focusing today on healthcare and big data and machine learning in healthcare. So there's, oopsie. There's actually an enormous amount of interest in the use of machine learning in uh, both biomedical research and in the delivery of healthcare. And it's, the enthusiasm is well justified, but there are also some reasons for caution. And in particular, as a bioethicist, um, I'm concerned that when we implement machine learning in healthcare, that we do it in a way that doesn't exist or exacerbate existing social inequalities um, and healthcare inequalities. So um, if you maybe think for a minute about maybe we want to train an algorithm to uh, predict uh, the five-year risk that somebody would die from heart disease. So how might we do that? We might train it using a variety of different things. So electronic health records is going to be one of the major uh, training data sets. We might also use some genomic data from those people. We might also use um, oh, some survey information about their diet or some Fitbit information about their, um, their exercise habits, right? And so we're gonna use all that data and that data is gonna go in. The algorithm will train on those data. And so maybe those data come from a large healthcare system uh, in Northern Wisconsin, for instance. So what might be the problems there? So first of all, the machine is learning not on uh, carefully curated data that was developed for a machine learning algorithm to train on, it's learning on data from the real world. And data from the real world, and particularly something like healthcare records, those data incorporate all kinds of social biases. Those biases are effectively built in. So let's think about predicting heart disease risk. Well, we have a lot of data from the early 2000s showing that women and men are not, who have heart disease, are not diagnosed similarly. Women are diagnosed much later um, than men are. Women and men are not given necessarily the same um, treatments, even when the same treatments would be indicated. So when the machine learning algorithm goes to learn on our healthcare records, that bias in the system is going to be built into the healthcare record. And even though there are a lot of people trying to retrain doctors to treat women better, basically, when they have heart disease, if you're looking at the existing practices and you're using that to train your algorithms, your algorithms might just learn those existing biases that are baked into the data. Because, and it wouldn't be necessarily making a mistake, um, but it would be learning something that we don't want it to learn, right? And so when we think about this, we might think that um, you know, under any theory of fairness, really, or justice that one uses to analyze healthcare delivery, uh, the system shouldn't be developing tools and processes that provide much better healthcare to some people or groups of people than to others. So how do we prevent that from happening? And I think, um, realistically, we need to, first of all, when we're working on training our algorithms when we're deciding what data sets we're going to use, we need to be thinking about how generalizable is, our, is the outcome of our machine learning going to be? For whom will it be useful? And we have to have that in mind as we're doing our work. Um, we also don't want our science, for instance, our precision medicine tools that we might be developing now, to develop in a way that there are lots of medical tests for some groups of people and no tests for other groups of people because I think it, what we know now is that it's likely to be the case that not all tests, not all algorithms are likely to work for everybody. So first we should do the best we could to make them as generalizable as possible, but then we should understand what their limits are and we should also be thinking about how to make enough tools that we have some that work for everybody, right? Um, so how do we prevent medical algorithms from learning and reinforcing existing patterns of unfairness and inequality? And um, if they do learn existing patterns of unfairness and inequality, who is responsible for that? So when people make biased judgments, um, we have laws that hold them accountable, we hold them morally accountable, we have ways of doing that, um, but it's not so clear when an algorithm 
uh, first of all, we have to know that it's making biased judgments. And I have to say that they're, uh, okay. Thank you. Questions? Yes. Yeah, and so the question had to do with algorithms that are being used in the criminal justice system. There's actually litigation going on right now concerning um, both their, their sort of transparency um, and then the biases that might be built into them. And again, I mean, it's, it's really the same problem that, you know, if you train the algorithm on existing data about who is uh, let go on parole or how long different people are sentenced for, um, and if the existing data are very, very biased, the algorithm might learn that bias. Um, and a second problem is that if we don't have access to that algorithm because it's proprietary, then other people can't test it and understand its biases and understand its limitations. So there is um, actually litigation right now concerning judges using these these out proprietary algorithms. Yeah. Yes. yes. Um, you know, I think it would just be different, right? So you have more uniform healthcare systems. You might have more uniform processes that would be reflected in data. But I think, you know, especially healthcare data, um, they're very difficult because there are all kinds of reasons that you're going to get sort of biases, systematic patterns incorporated into the data. Some of them will reflect, you know, social inequalities. Some of them will reflect in the healthcare data might reflect real biological differences between, say, men and women, for instance. Um, there are a lot of things that can create those systematic patterns, and I have no doubt that they are in the data in Europe as well as they are in the United States. Um, yeah, so they, they might have different biases, but they will have some systematic biases in their real world data, there's no doubt. <laughs> yes. Oh, thank you so much. That's just what I was saying when the gong sounded. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, in fact, there are people here at this university who are um, st developing algorithms that effectively test other algorithms and try to understand whether those algorithms are using, um, are making decisions based on information that we think ought to be irrelevant. Uh, you know, like an example would be if an algorithm uh, to screen employment applications is screening out all the people who had, say, names that sounded Middle Eastern, right? We wouldn't want that to be happening. And there are people who are actually developing algorithms to essentially test the fairness of other algorithms. I also think we could be doing a lot more to be modeling the, the data sets that the algorithms are learning on. So that's an area that I'm just starting to think about. Yes. Uh, so um, it can be very difficult to get a hold of electronic health data, and some people think that maybe like machine learning and big data approaches are behind the curve in the healthcare world in part because it is very difficult to get a hold of those data. On the other hand, perhaps appropriate that it's much more difficult for computer scientists to access healthcare data than it is for them to access weather data or something like that. So there, there's a social trade-off there. Uh, there are also uh, increasingly well-developed methods for, um, for, for maintaining the confidentiality of those healthcare data for um, anonymizing, blinding, you know, double coding things, all kinds of ways to um, try to really prevent sensitive information from leaking out when computer scientists are working on them. Quick question, Rest. <laughs> well, 
So I, I don't think that's true, but I do think, you know, some of the questions that people have asked about how do you know when there are these problems are really important, right? And I mean, for one thing, the reason we have all those biases, <laughs> talk to me later.